Hi everyone, the circuit portion of today's kettlebell workout is gonna take you 18 minutes to complete. We're gonna use an interval structure of 45 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest. You'll go through the circuit of exercises three times. After the circuit, you'll have a three minute AMRAP finisher. I'm using a 20 pound kettlebell from ProSource for this workout. As someone who lives in a tiny city apartment and has to worry about downstairs neighbors, I love that it's vinyl coated. That helps a bunch with reducing noise and protecting my floors in general. If you're looking to invest in multiple sizes of kettlebells for your home gym, ProSource is also a great choice because they're color coded by weight. One of the first things I look for in kettlebells, especially the medium to heavier sizes, is a handle that's wide enough to grip with both hands, which this one is. It has a large, smooth handle and is going to get a ton of use in my apartment. As I mentioned, I'm using a 20 pound kettlebell for this workout, but you should use whatever weight works for you. If you're newer to working out with kettlebells, definitely go with a weight that's lighter than what you think you can handle. Get the form down using that lighter weight and then progress to a heavier one. Other than a kettlebell, you'll just need a mat for the three minute finisher at the end of this workout. I'm using ProSource's exercise puzzle mat. It's thicker than the yoga mat I typically use when working out at home, which is awesome for the heavier weight. I'm sure my landlord appreciates the thicker padding as I'm thumping around a 20 pound kettlebell on the floor. It's easy to snap together and I love that you can assemble it small or big to fit your space and the exercises you'll be doing. It also comes with a border that snaps on and off to make it look nice and finished and pretty, which is great if you film yourself doing burpees for a living. As our sponsor today, ProSource is generously offering you guys 15% off their kettlebells and workout mats with the code PERRY15. I'll remind you of that at the end of the workout and I'll also include it down below in the description. Now, before we get to today's workout, I'm gonna spend a few minutes going over form for the exercises, just cause this is the first time we've used kettlebells on the channel. If you're familiar with kettlebells, you work out with them all the time, you know what you're doing, you might wanna just fast forward a couple minutes. Um, these next few intro minutes are really gonna be for those who are unfamiliar with the exercises. Whether you fast forward or not, make sure that you're warmed up before doing this workout. As always, you can do the five minute warm up I have on my channel, or you can do your own at home. So for a single arm swing, you're gonna start with the kettlebell on the ground, about a foot in front of you. Feet are about shoulders width apart. And you're gonna come down and you're going to grab it with the hand that's going to be the focus. You start with a back swing and then you're gonna come up into it. Now, when the kettlebell's swinging between your legs, your thumb is gonna lead the way. So palm will face out to the side. Thumb leads the way. And then when you come up at the top, your palm is gonna face the ground. So thumb between your legs, palm to the ground. Another thing you wanna be careful of, as you swing, you don't wanna let the weight pull your shoulder forward. So I have a tendency to hyperextend my elbows, so I'm constantly reminding myself to add a little bend. Make sure you're doing that on these as well. If you lock out your arm, that weight is gonna kinda of pull your shoulder forward. You wanna keep your shoulder back, chest open and square. So a little soft bend to the elbow. Next, most important thing, a swing is not a squat, so it's not this. You're hinging from the hips, your butt and hips are going back and down. You do have a soft bend to the knees, but it's not a squat. And then you create the momentum for the swing by thrusting your hips forward, squeezing your bum at the top. So when you're at the top of your kettlebell swing, it's almost like your body is in a plank, just vertical. Okay, so we'll just put it together so you can see it in motion. For a windmill, start by bringing the kettlebell to a racked position right here with the weight on the outside of your wrist. So whatever arm is working, that foot is gonna be pointing straight ahead. The non-working foot is going to be angled out. So your feet are kind of making a 90 degree angle. From here, press that kettlebell up overhead. Now this one is great for shoulder stability. You're also working the obliques. So looking up at the kettlebell the whole time, we're gonna lower down, keep the kettlebell pointing up towards the ceiling, and then you're gonna come back up. So you're lowering down, you can use this leg for guidance, and back up. Make sure that you don't lock out this knee completely. I like to keep just a soft micro bend to it. So for a goblet squat, you're gonna hold the weight at the base of the handles to the side like this. You can also do it upside down, um, but I'd recommend handles, weight pointing down. And you're gonna have the kettlebell right to your chest the whole time, elbows locked in tight, chest is open, so engage your shoulder blades to keep that chest broad. Don't let the weight of it hunch you forward. Feet are going to be about shoulder width apart, and as we squat down, 
A goblet squat is basically a front squat. So you wanna keep your chest open. Your torso stays pretty upright as you lower down, elbows to the inside of those legs, weight in the heel, and they're gonna power up, squeezing your glutes at the top. So if your hips are really tight, you might find that you're not getting low enough to get the elbows on the inside of the legs. That's okay, maybe you start by just coming down here. But what I want you to focus on is staying upright rather than bending forward, okay? So from the side, feet about shoulder width apart, abs engaged, lower down, weights in my heels, and up. We're gonna do a high pull jump squat combo. So for the high pull part of it, you want your feet about shoulders width apart, maybe a little wider. We are going to squat down, think deadlift. So I want that neutral spine, chest open. You're going to grab the kettlebell with both hands and you're gonna to start to stand up through the legs. Now, once the kettlebell gets to about here, this is when you're gonna start pulling with the elbows. Now, when you do a high pull, you're not pulling up like this, you're leading with the elbows. So you wanna think elbows up to the ceiling. When you bring the kettlebell down, it should hit the floor. So that's the high pull part of it, but we're gonna combo it with a jump squat. So it'll look like this. Squat down, grip that kettlebell. High pull to the ground, jump squat. High pull, jump squat. All right guys, let's get to the circuit. First exercise is gonna be that single arm swing on the right arm. So again, you always start with it on the floor, a little in front of you, feet about shoulders width apart, and you start with that back swing. I'll do it at an angle. Make sure you're not locking out your elbow. The swing comes from your hips. So you're hinging forward. It's not a squat, although your knees are softening as you swing. Notice on the downswing, my gaze is slightly shifting down. That's just so I don't crane my neck. Look if I look up the whole time, rest. If I look up the whole time, I'm craning my neck on the downswing. Next up, we are going to do windmills, also on the right arm. So to get into position, that right foot is pointing forward, left foot out to the side. Look at the kettlebell the whole time. Looking at the kettlebell is going to make it easier for you to keep it pointing towards the ceiling the whole time. This one isn't so much about speed, it's about stability. I heard a trainer once call it this move, yoga with weights. I like that, think of it that way. and rest. So next up is going to be a goblet squat. So we'll even out the arms a little bit. We'll get the left arm into the mix. Again, you wanna hold the weight by the handles, kind of cupping the round part. It's gonna be in towards your chest. Weight stays in your heels. Squeeze your bum at the top to finish it. And again, we're not leaning forward on this one. Don't let the weight bring you forward. Think of staying open and upright. and rest. Next up is gonna be that single arm swing, but on the left arm. It's normal for different arms, different sides of the body to feel totally different during a move. So go into this one knowing that if it's your non-dominant side, it might feel a lot harder than, just, than what we just did on the right. 
start by swinging back, and then you come up. Remember, don't lock out that left elbow. This is definitely my weaker side. Form does not feel quite as tight for me. Really gotta focus. And rest. Okay, so we're gonna do that windmill on the left. So to get into position, you're gonna rack it. The left foot's gonna be pointing forward. The right foot will be pointed out to the side. Press that weight overhead, look at it, and let's go. and rest. Okay, so now we have that high pull jump squat combo. Last exercise in the circuit, but again, we're doing it three times. So feet shoulder width apart, maybe a little lower. Squat down, chest stays open. High pull elbows lead the way. Jump squat, land softly. If you need to modify this one, don't do the jump squat, just do a regular squat. Elbows. And rest. I'll do the swings facing forward this time. I don't know what's gonna be the most helpful angle for you guys, so we'll just play around with it. Right arm, swing. So I just keep the non-working arm out to the side. I have seen some trainers uh, move it in the same direction as the kettlebell. That's just like a little too much to think about for me. And rest. Okay, right arm, that windmill. Again, you wanna think about how you're getting in and out of these exercises as well. So rack it, press it up, and then we go into the windmill. If you're new to these, you don't have to go all the way down. You might just start a few inches back up and then slowly build up into that full range of motion. Rest. Okay, goblet squats up next.
Make sure weight is staying in your heels. That's gonna prevent your knees from jutting out farther than your toes. I notice in these workouts, I never smile. Like in all my workout pictures, I look like I'm miserable, which I guess is half true. <laughs> but I'm consciously trying to uh, make these look a little more enjoyable. Okay, single arm swings on the left. I'm not gonna talk a lot during these because honestly, the left side's really hard for me. I gotta just focus on doing the form correctly. What I'm noticing for myself on the left side is that left shoulder wanting to pull forward. If you're noticing that, let's make a conscious effort together to keep that shoulder back as we do this. So what's gonna help a lot, don't lock out that left elbow. Okay, windmills on the left. Again, to get into it, clean it to that rack position, and then push it up. Left foot points forward, right foot to the side. Look at that kettlebell the whole time. and rest, but come out of it safely. So when that timer goes off, don't just thud the bell. However you got into the move, that's how you wanna get out of it. Okay, high pull jump squat combo, let's do it. Elbows lead the way, down to the floor, jump. So it's not pulling up like this. Again, elbows lead the way. Elbows. So at the top of it, your elbows should be higher than your wrists. Make sure your core is in tight at the top. So if you don't hold your core in tight at the top of the high pull, you're gonna look like this. You don't want that. By the way, if I stop to demo something, doesn't mean you should rest. Single arm swing on the right. Last time you have to do these. Remember, chest open and let's do a little check. Are your abs engaged? Make sure they are. You're gonna feel this in a bad way in your low back tomorrow and we don't want that. Abs in tight. If at any point you feel the swings getting sloppy, guys, just bring it to a stop on the floor, take a breath, and then go back into it. Way better, especially if you're newer to kettlebells, build up to the 45 seconds. Rest. Whew, okay. Windmill, right arm. Again, how do we get into it? You clean it. Press it. Now we're safely in position. Keep the 
this bottom hand pretty close to your leg. You can even kind of lightly slide the back of it down your leg, but don't put pressure on the leg. It's just a guide if you need it. Just back of the hand, open palm. And rest. Bring it down to the rack position to the floor. Okay, goblet squat time. What is this? Am I Carlton from Fresh Prince? All right, lowering down. Your chest stays upright, roll those shoulders back, weight in your heels, and we have not lost connection to the core. All right, I'm feeling these now. Round three. All right. Okay. We have that single arm swing on the left. By the way, that was not a good way to put your kettlebell down. Don't lean, always pick up from the legs, bend there, so I apologize for that. I can feel myself forgetting to hold my abs in tight at the top. Again, guys, build up to the 45 seconds. If you need to rest, you carefully bring that kettlebell to the floor, bending at the knees, and then get back into it. Whew, and rest. Okay, windmill left side. We're getting there, guys. Left foot forward, right foot out at an angle. Okay, what's next? High pull, jump squat, and then we're done with the circuit. All right. So again, the goal of the high pull is you're always kind of staying upright through the chest. So you're never leaning down like this. You don't pick up the kettlebell like that. See, look, I'm still upright even at the bottom. Upright through the chest, that is. You're, of course, low through the legs like a deadlift. Modification, air squat instead of the jump squat. Oh, dig deep, guys, we're so close. Rest. Whew. And then we're gonna go right into our finisher. It's a three minute AMRAP which means you're gonna do as many rounds as possible of the combo I'm showing you as you can in three minutes. So as you're seeing now, it's 10 Russian twists. You're gonna place the kettlebell down. You're gonna roll back, 
Roll forward with your ankles crossed, leap back into a plank, 10 mountain climbers. Now I know that looks a little funky. <laughs> you can do it, I promise. But I just wanna show you how to modify if you need to. So instead of doing the roll and the jump through, this is how you would modify. You would give me your 10 Russian twists, so five to each side. You would put the kettlebell down, and then you would just turn over into a plank and do your 10 mountain climbers, five on each side. From there, sit down, go back to the Russian twist. That's your modification. Okay guys, three minutes on the clock. This is it for your workout. 10 Russian twists, which ends up being five to each side. Roll over the plank, mountain climbers. We start in three, two, one, let's go. So you're just going at your own pace. Don't worry if you're going faster or slower than I am. Okay, roll back, lift your butt up, get momentum, talk back to plank. One minute down, guys. Two to go. Now remember, if you need to modify, instead of rolling and jumping through after you do the 10 Russian twists, Flip over into your plank here. And then you would just flip back on your bum. And if the kettlebell is getting to be too much, just do body weight Russian twists, side to side like this. So maybe you try to pick up the pace a little bit. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed that workout. As a reminder, you get 15% off at ProSource if you're shopping for kettlebells or exercise mats. The code to get that 15% off is PERRY15, and I've included links below in the description. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't already, subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys next week.